This is interesting. Okay. 안녕하세요. 피에트로 도아르입니다. 반갑습니다. These lights are really bright. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm going to pretend I can see you because I can't see anybody. Now I know why everybody's hand was up and no questions were asked. <laughs> okay. Uh, a little background quickly. First of all, it is, and I reflect, uh, Constantine's and, uh, and Sergei's comments that uh, it's really wonderful to be here today and see so many bright minds, uh, so many expectant minds, and every single one of them living, not today, but in the future. Uh, because I'm a real estate guy. I don't know anything about technology. I'm pretty sure Mr. Draper doesn't know anything about technology, actually. <laughs> but what he does understand is opportunity. And that's the marriage of vision and technology, because vision alone stays in mind. Technology is the vehicle to translate vision into a reality. And to do that, you have to believe it. You have to believe in that future. A real estate developer necessarily and by nature lives in the future and is constrained by the technology of today because it takes 15 to 20 years for a new city to find its internal momentum where People move in and create a place. All we can do is build a place. But until the people are there, living lives, going to universities, going on dates, getting attorneys and suing each other, <laughs> police, lawyers, insurance, dentists, and everything else, bars, restaurants, and all the things that we call lifestyle is an evolution in a development process. So the developer is kind of an interesting animal because the mind is 10 years from now, but the reality is today. So vision and technology, and I'm a vision guy, and this is dream change. And Dream Chain is a vision, and it's a big vision, because I also like to operate under an eye, a thought that you, when you are presented with an opportunity that the blockchain now represents, and I'm gonna make sure I don't step off this thing, okay? Because <laughs> I'll prove to you, if I do, that we still need insurance agents. <laughs> okay. All right. And, as I was going to say that, blockchain isn't... The concern I have about blockchain is people seem to be thinking in bounded ecosystems, which is an irony, because the whole point of it is, is to have no boundaries. The point of it is, is to rip up the copper wires, replace them with fiber optics to replace them fiber optics with better means of transferring communication faster between points to become instantaneous. And the more I see ICOs, and I'll be honest on this, if you talked to me a year ago that I'd be standing here talking about blockchain and cryptocurrencies, I said, I would have told you you're talking to the wrong guy. Isn't that what blockchain's all about? Get in or watch it go by. And we saw that happen with the internet and the promise of the internet, which became in many ways the nightmare of the internet. I'm afraid to turn my computer on. I saw a 
I saw a picture, and I'll do this quickly. I saw a picture of Mark Zuckerberg with his T-shirt on, and you know, in his messy office. And if you looked really, really, really close on his, on his, on his desk, he had a tape across the camera of his computer. <laughs> Even he's concerned about that technology and security and reliability. He had a tape across the camera lens. Okay? That's the pluses, that's the negatives, because it was technology that allowed a kid, when there was already Googles and Face, uh, Googles and uh, Yahoos, and we can see that even in technology, it doesn't always apply if you don't know how to keep adapting to what's new. Who'd have thought Amazon, when he started trading books in his garage, if he had told you, one day I want to send a rocket into space, how many would of you have believed that story? Hmm? <laughs> okay, so here we have Dream Chain, the background. You have a guy like me, he's called President of Dream Chain. And as I say, by yourself, any idea is just an idea that will go nowhere. You need a room full of incredibly smart people, not, who are not experts in the same thing. There's no redundancy of talent. What you need is complementing talents to make visions come realities. And these talents start to generate and attract more talent as you get more scale. And suddenly you have people around the world believing in that vision that you had sitting one day at a kitchen table with a cup of coffee and wondering, could I even do this? And should I do this? And should I spend that time and money and energy not even having any concept if it can actually work except one thing? I really believe it. <laughs> and if I talk to a few more people, maybe they'll believe it. And then more people sort of believe it. And before you know it, it's a thing. It's a real thing. So you're all about, and many of you probably already are, <laughs> quite successful in the whole cryptocurrency and um, the blockchain still in its infancy, still trying to find its applications, still trying to find its scale. So here we are at Dream Chain, an idea that started with a group of people talking about how could we make this better? And what is cryptocurrency? There's always often that talk between blockchain and cryptocurrency as though they are the same thing. They are not. Cryptocurrency is a cryptocurrency. It is not necessarily blockchain. When you trade cryptocurrencies, are you looking at their blockchain backgrounds? Are you, are you analyzing what's behind that currency? Now, most of the planet who's, ex who's who are basically trading currencies. That's a very old practice. And they're not going behind those currencies, actually, to see what sort of blockchain technologies are behind it. All right? You're, a lot of people are specking to make money. A lot of the ICOs I've seen. I'll talk about the real estate. I see almost no real estate people. What I see is a bunch of young people, not so young sometimes, great ideas about how development or, or leasing can work better, but they're talking about token and value first before that seems to me they're thinking through the entire idea. And if you read the ICOs, they say, we're going to do this to this industry. But when you read them closely, they say, but first we're going to do this. <laughs> and then we're going to get to that. Okay. Well, okay, here we are, Dream Chain, Decentralized Real Estate, D-R-E-A-M, Dream Chain. And Dream Chain is a vision. It's a vision where that word global is its absolute center of definition and mission. And we operate with this new technologies of blockchain and the convergence of blockchain and crypto to a very simple mindset. Go big or go home. Because if you don't have a big vision, you're going to go home. Don't stop at the boundary. 
And the purpose of, 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 dream, uh, well, of dream Chain is to dissolve the boundaries and create commonalities. And hopefully, through dissolving those boundaries of ecosystems, we create the common currency. So that how many in Ulsan can hold a few coins in her hand, and that represents the ownership of a global portfolio. And eventually to create a currency that's institutional quality. And how we, and institutional quality means what? The pension funds, the insurance companies who need to invest in different asset classes. So we don't want to be gold, we don't want to be diamonds, we don't want to go into insurance derivatives. And we're real estate. And real estate is, you'll see, one of the most complex industries on the planet. And yet it's the oldest industry on the planet. When two cavemen fought over a cave, that was a real estate deal. <laughs> okay? So let me take you through it now. Quickly, background, evolution of information technologies, challenges and opportunities, real estate and the blockchain, introduction to dream chain, business goals, strategies, roadmap, global team, advisors, partners, and we won't go into seven, eight, or nine at this table. There's a real story here. Let's start it. Because again, blockchain is another evolution in a really long story. And we can take it all the way back from your, from your smartphones to your, your desktop computers to our telephones and, and card readers, <laughs> um, all the way back to printing presses. There's a real story here. Because in many ways, information technology for the masses had its roots right here in Korea. And our story is, and I, I know I have a kind of an odd face when you hear this, is we come from Korea. This is where this idea is being generated. And I've been here for 23 years. And I always like to say with the Koreans, don't think you beat the Koreans until that clock has run out. Because they'll get you every time. <laughs> just like they did with the Germans. <laughs> so the Jikji Buddhist Bible was a metal type in 1377. It was monopolized. Some of the dangers I see going on even with blockchain technology today in terms of access is you call monopolized, it was monopolized by royalty and controlled. And so that technology died out. And it had huge consequences for all of Asia that that technology never got into the hands, never got decentralized. Gutenberg, nearly 100 years later, commercialized it. They put books out. They put instruction books out. They did the Bible first, but that suddenly led to sharing ideas about technology and putting it out to the masses. How do you build ships? People studied it. They read it. How do you build trains? People read it. How do you build guns that are really scary and can do a lot of things? They shared the technology. It went all over Europe. And what happened? It was Europe who came the foundation of modern civilization as we know it today. It should have been the Koreans. And here we go. Commercialized printing technique leading to reformations, printing of protest, and printing them all over Europe. The roots of Protestantism was in a printing machine. Renaissance, ideas, Leonardo da Vinci's, and right now, writing books, uh, theories of social interaction, Rousseau, others, they wrote books. They, those books were spread out all over Europe. It radicalized thinking. Industrial revolution, that's where it led. And that's, as we call it, the Western predominance over modern civilization. It should be reading today, the Korean predominance over modern, over modern civilization. That's what could have happened. The next 
information revolution, 15th century, 20, and 21st. Yeah, you can see we really thought a lot about what we're doing. We're real estate guys, but we went all the way back to think about what we're trying to do and what's the roots and genesis of what we want to do. Accessi popularization first, accessibility, internet, and the next one, reliability and security. Oops, wrong way. Disruption and convergence. I've been in Korea for 23 years doing real estate. I am the biggest disruptor you can imagine. <laughs> All my career is always about not doing what everybody is doing today, but finding out how to do it different and do it better. And taking that chance of that huge idea that Korea has always allowed me to try. Because I'm not bounded by a lot of the cultural issues. I'm unbounded by the opportunities I see in front of me. Blockchains, and so we call disruption and convergence. You can't build on old models. You've got to break old models down in order to recreate them into new solutions. I always said a problem is simply a solution deconstructed. Same math. Rubik's Cube is a problem that you solve, but the cube didn't change. You just found its logical order. So out of the chronic inefficiencies that we all know, Real estate essential, it's, it's an essential industry. It, you can't get away from real estate. You're in a room that has a real estate function. It's probably being paid for. We have entitlement to use this room at this moment. It's a real estate deal, not just a conference. Okay? Blockchain and universal impact. Commercialization of it, technology, will be disruptive. It really will be and creative impact on all industries on par with the introduction of the internet. Well, it's actually an evolution of the internet because you really don't access the blockchains without the internet. So we can't say it's, a, it's disassociated, but it's, a, it's the next evolution. And this is gonna create the new real estate paradigm. Adoption of blockchain will revolutionize current real estate practices, standards, and I think this is like a button or something. No, I guess I don't have that. Is that a light? Ah, there it goes. Okay. Let's take a quick look, and this, some numbers might shock some of you, to understand the opportunities to create better balances, social imbalances, that are almost worse than they've ever been in history. The concentration of capital in the hands of a few to the cost of the many. 217 trillion, I don't know how they came up with that number, but anyway, 217 trillion. I right, would never know how to say that in Korean, all right? That is a big number, all right? The importance of real estate to the community is 58% of the value of all assets, whatever you call an asset, whatever commodity, it's 58% of that total value. It's nearly 60%. You can't get away from real estate. And what is, everybody's seen these kind of ch charts several times because everybody who talks about trying to fix something in real estate talks about these things. Low liquidity, fraud, unnecessary expenses, difficult cross-border, complicated procedure, financial barriers. Low accessibility, the walls are high in order to access. Due to these chronic inefficiencies, real estate assets are difficult to access for half the world, half the world's population. What is the problem we're trying to solve? There, need to solve for greater universal inclusion into the real estate industry, and we'll show you why. It's the wealth gap. 1% of the world's population, 1%, owns 80% of real estate. Do you realize what that is? 1% controls 80% of the world's... This is Middle Ages. This is when we used to have kings and, and, and dukes and things that owned everything and everybody else was a serf. If all you can do is rent your place to the master, you're living like a serf, like a hundred years, like 
300 years ago. The lower 50% has nearly zero access. The middle, this 18, less than 18%, are the guys who sort of arbitrage the edge and make some money out of it. That's an incredible, that's 3.7 billion. Can't get to real estate. That's the problem we'd like to solve. Prop tech, great. Great people, smart, working hard, thinking of ideas, putting it on the internet as a function. How do you find them? How does the average person actually know what they're looking for? And how does that average person able to compare this service to that service? I'm talking normal people. That 1% hires a whole bunch of smart people like you to do that. But that average person who's trying to buy a house from one place to another or move from one spot to another or trying to figure out how can they afford this place and what's the best cost for this, this is like an explosion. It looks like a fireworks, <laughs> okay? But that is the condition. Really great companies in there, by the way. Really smart people. I just don't know if I can spend three hours on a Sunday trying to find one and then understand it. Vision of Dream Chain, improve the accessibility, utility, reliability. That's our vision. Integrating blockchain technologies into the Dream Chain global network to become the world's leading decentralized real estate community. We're going to dissolve the boundaries of an ecosystem. Instead of these small development with great ideas of how you do this, and this one is another bounded ecosystem and how you do that, we want to first start off with creating the global infrastructure. We're going to go out to the world because you still have to be in real estate. As global as you want to be, you got to be local. And you got to know your local place better than the next one because the way people drink coffee in Bulgaria, whether it's Starbucks or not, that's part of globalization. It's not quite the same way they might do it in a really cold place or in a place like Georgia. I mean, you need to know the local information, the place that you're go you, you want to transact to. And what are we really doing at the end of the day with all the technologies? It's an old paradigm. You're moving capital, which is over here and hard to access, who needs to find transactions to where that transaction might be around the world and do it efficiently. But that, that, where that transaction actually is, is also another source of capital for the transaction that's over here. You need to create that grid, then which information to those, the transaction to the capital, and trades the information to create capital balances, transaction balances, and access. So, mission, goal, a real estate industry focused port, port, <laughs> Portal platform, I can't even say that five times, okay. Uh, the target, connect property markets to all user communities. Very much what the real, uh, uh, real estate chain is doing in terms of the real estate services. They're trying to actually make that a global, uh, uh, accessible global network so that you can instantaneously start drawing down information about buildings in Shanghai or residential complexes in L.A. We want to do this on a larger scale. Method, easily accessible ecosystems of property data information services. And when I read that, I almost get really bored. But you know what? That is basics. The basics are actually quite boring. What's exciting is how you bring in and accrete those, those, various, uh, those various platforms into something that's really usable. So here we are, value proposition. Create a, a, our DApp ecosystems, big data information services and applications to the users, consumers, private investors, entrepreneurs, institutions, and governments through the common platform in which we have constant uh, cross-fertilization of innovators and experts. Core elements of the dream chain, global real estate networks, global networks acquired through years of experience. Everybody's a real estate guy in our, in our business. That's where we start off. 
value exchange. How do we make that safe and reliable, uh, transparent, and decentralization? But you know, it's interesting. That word decentralization, is it really decentralized at the end of the day in exchange? What we're really doing is creating new control centers for the more efficient access of information, otherwise you have chaos. So in fact, it's sort of an inherent contradiction, in my view. In order to make it truly efficient, you're creating another kind of exchange and another kind of control center. But that's OK, because it's the velocities and the access. Good. I'm almost done. <laughs> Dream chain, strategic st uh, direction, consolidate the no global network. All here today are dream chain partners from Dubai, from Bulgaria, from the Russia, from the United States, uh, India, and others. These are all part of the global uh, dream chain. Create a real estate apps ecosystem. We all know what that means, but on a global basis. Encompass the universe of real estate communities. We want to we want to address that 50% uh, imbalance. Because you know what? It's not because I'm humanitarian. It's because it's a huge opportunity. The aggregate values, even if you're talking about $10 or $5 each, within $3.7 billion is a huge market to solve. OK. Promote cryptocurrency. We, I haven't once talked about a cryptocurrency in this thing. But yeah, cryptocurrency is, is, the, is the lubricant that makes sure that information goes back and forth as quickly as possible so that it makes economic sense, but does it in such a way that it has achieved efficiencies towards in, in, the, in going across the borders that I don't think humankind has ever witnessed before. Launch the dream, here's our action plan. How are we gonna do it? I've told you what the problem is. I've given you our ideas on how it needs to be solved, and then here's how we'll solve it. Launch the Dream Chain Global Platform. That's where we've been working on for months very quietly. Utilize activities of the Blockchain Institute. We created an actual research institute that is focused on blockchain applications for real estate. And it was, it's going to give forums all over the world just like this. And we're going to get information, and we're going to share ideas, and we're going to be open, and we're going to encourage and incubate those in which we think uh, we can add to that ecosystem to maximize the efficiencies. Develop a real estate payment gateway so in the tokenization of that process, you cr end up creating a world currency only bounded by the fact that everything to do with it involves real estate. Build and operate a blockchain-based value exchange. Promote, here's the key, promote regulatory compliance by retaining legal tax experts. Any of you guys think the lawyers and the tax guys are going away? Forget it. I just don't know an example in humankind where that can happen. Because where governments are threatened, they'll regulate. Even if it's in the best interest of the people to, to deregulate, Maybe I'm cynical, but I'm going to tell you, I just don't see the Chinese just totally opening up and seeing a replacement for the yuan in cryptocurrency. Oops, wrong way. Mechanism of interchain applications. We'll just, I'm not going to go through all this. We're all smart here. We understand that. We'll utilize the best in class to create the, the, the most efficient inter, inter, interchange and interconnection within our ecosystems. And here we are, currency of interconnectivity, a single coin that allows that information, that ecosystem operate at maximum efficiencies so that anybody from any point on the globe can access it through single coin. Ecosystem growth drivers will start with what's already best in class, and then through our, our, through our research institutes and the, our plans to create um, incubators, co-work spaces within every office we have around the world, we'll be, having, we'll be gardening our own dApps constantly. And that's, how we, that's the third leg. So we go into existing that we can 
work with on the blockchain, uh, on the blockchain those internet apps that we consider to be best in class. So we'll do the work for the, most of the investors who can't access, can't figure it out, and we'll incubate ourselves. And smart city development. Can anybody raise their hand who knows about Sungdo? Sungdo Shintoshi? Hmm? Okay. You're looking at one of its founders. Four guys sitting around a table in 2000, I think it was. It used to be called Media Valley. It was a bankrupt attempt to create a, sort of a Silicon Valley. It was half underwater, and Mayor Che was still mayor of Incheon. Myself, uh, Mr. M, Mr. Shim, who was with uh, Incheon, and one other gentleman, I think it was, uh, who had been approached by this US group who wanted to try to do this project. They were approached by POSCO. They had no idea what to do. Four of us sat around a table and wondered, should we do this? Because if it fails, we're going to look like the biggest idiots in the world. And then if we succeed, it's going to be the hardest thing we ever did. And that's why I ended up not only as a founding partner, but I was CEO and CIO of New Sungdo City, and I raised over two billion US dollars for that project. And I'm so proud today. It isn't perfect. It's the world's, of course, Korea. It's the world's first smart city. It, it employed technologies of the time that were best in class, and usually made no economic sense, actually. But that was part of the cost of fulfilling Incheon City's dream. And we're going to use blockchain now, which is way above anything we were able to do. And we're going to integrate blockchain technologies, just like Constantine was telling you. It's a very similar, and that's why he's part of the Dream Chain Network, because we're going to use those technologies to integrate them. And yesterday, we announced the launch of our first new new city development initiative, uh, uh, to be built in, in southern Busan, um, I mean, southern Korea. So, execution plan, blockchain academic uh, research, global organizations, experts, stage one, here's our goals, globally centralized, global partners, through global partnerships, continents, countries, cities, alliances, develop and incubate, and connect. Those are great words. Alliances develop and connect through the blockchain. Alliances develop and connect uh, through partnership. And here's our timeline. We started this concepts in 2015 by hosting world forums in real estate. And this is the, here's where we're taking this. We're now at uh, 218. We formed Dream Global Partners. We've now started a process of forming offices around the world. And this is our, we're going to integrate that entire matrix, that entire infrastructure into, the, into a blockchain efficient, crypto driven, lubricated uh, global platform. Here we are, the partners. You see a gentleman over there. We really do know what we're doing. We have great people. Uh, all, you'll see the real estate experts all over the world. I mean, and international, this is today. This is what this is what careful building does. And we represent faces and names from around the world. Okay, and I'm going to stop there. And I want to thank you all for sharing a vision with me. Just as I hope as we move forward, we're going to be sitting in rooms with a lot of you folks and helping to make your dreams become a reality as part of the Dream Chain Global Network. And thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for meeting up.